and welcome to another episode of Get With It Podcast. So this is 2019. We're doing something new and exciting, <laughs> changing things up. We are going to be videoing along with the podcast and we're at the Xpeed Software. Xpeed Software? This is where I... It's where it happens. This is where it all happens. And um, so if you're listening to this, you can check us out. Uh, we, I do have a YouTube channel, uh, Elizabeth Tolia, and this will also be on the getwitted.org website. I had a brain for a moment there. And the Elizabeth Tolia dot elizabethtolia.com website so just to make sure everybody knows we can't edit this <laughs> so as usual i will probably screw things up and darren my we love darren he normally goes through and fixes my messes but this is it right this is a done live and real this is real authentic this is the authentic elizabeth you cannot get any more <laughs> What you have there. <laughs> so, so to start us off on our video, we have Terry Bettner, Bet Bettinger. God, I always screw it up. I can't. That's I mean, okay. and people who have listened to the podcast know that I screw up everybody's last name. So, you know, it is it's what it is. The worst thing that happens today. That's it's a true. good day. <laughs> that that is true. That is true. So Terry has lots she's going to tell us about, but. The most important one is she's on the advisory board of Get With It. So she's, you know, she's one of our peeps. Trying to so make, make the mission happen. Make the mission happen. All right, so we're going to start off okay. with a little vitamin C intake. She's got a little happy new a, year. Happy new year. She's got a little, a little vitamin C. A little gin and blood orange going on in there. <laughs> and I gave up drinking beer, so um, this is... Cider, does that count? Vitamin C. No. <laughs> I just got to shake from there. I dare. No, I'm good. So, all right. So, are you ready? I'm so ready. So, we're going to go back. I know you're only in your 20s, but let's um, chat about <laughs> your, your, your history. Sure. My history. I know. Like, this could be like a his. We could like. This could be a. Uh... I, I, I've told you I do the genealogy, right? I, exactly. So my history can go back wow. right now, maybe 22 generations I we can, can go back. But let's not. Let's okay, talk. all right. Let's talk about my technology history. There we go. <laughs> um, I am a tenured, tenured. tenured uh, technology professional. So my entire professional career has been within the technology space. Um, right out of college, while I was a political science and business and history uh, major. Where'd you go to college? I went to Muskingum now University, um, an amazing uh, liberal arts college in oh, Eastern Ohio. They were a big supporter of ours in Cleveland. Yes, yes they were, um, and are looking to continue to be Yes, they are. Um, came out, um, started out of college in my uh, with my career at, at, at the old Bank Ohio, right? Um, in a management development program, Bank Ohio with a C. Um, eventually they became acquired by National City Bank, which was acquired by PNC. Um, but I started as a management development um, professional and so went through some rotations of different areas of the bank to, to kind of figure out where your affinity is and where your interest lies. And I literally halfway through ended up in the tech and ops space uh, and as part of my rotation and just loved it. Wanted to just stop right there. I didn't need to go any further, um, but it really, I immediately had an affinity. Now this was back in the day of mainframes and COBOL and uh, some of the more, you know, archaic, I won't give the exact old year. School. Uh, old school. Old school. Who's called old school? Legacy. Um, but, but I quickly realized, immediately realized that um, this was one going to be the future Two, this was going to be the key business drivers, the key driver of business capability of business enablement. I mean, I just felt that passion early on, even with some of the legacy technologies. And so that early, that early, I just immediately. So, um, started, became a developer, a programmer, um, liked it, didn't love it. Um, you could code. I can code and uh, didn't, lo 
But at the time, it really wasn't as an in, as integrated a team sport as it is now. Okay. So at the time, it felt very isolating, and I didn't love that. I am a people person. I am a team player. Um, so I basically started moving through um, analyst positions, systems analyst, project manager. Um, became some uh, um, started getting interested in the infrastructure space again at the time. A lot of mainframe Ooh. now moving to distributed computing, um, and so so really started exploring all, all the areas around where I started as that you know core COBOL developer. Um, started expanding to the areas around it. Again, loved it. Moved to different banks. So Bank Ohio became National City. Moved to Bank One. Became J P Morgan. It went to Citigroup, running global investment banking platforms. Um, and then about five years ago, realized that while I had been professionally um, successful, I, I felt a little disconnected from my community. Um, I remember I was sitting in, in uh, a far off land <laughs> with a team that didn't speak a whole lot of English and I was bragging about Ohio. And it just, I had an epiphany of, you know, Ohio, a place I haven't been in 40 days. So five years ago, I completely redirected, uh, both personally and professionally. I moved into the public sector, uh, became the CIO of Franklin County. I immediately became engaged with a lot of my organizations, community organizations, uh, certainly women in tech, right, Get Wit It and others. Um, and a number of other, I sit on the board of, for example, IC Stars. IC Stars is an amazing uh, workforce development um, uh, inter social enterprise working to bring non traditional <laughs> um, student people of color, women, minorities, people who were not on your traditional four year MIS degree path, but bringing them into the technology space, giving them an ecosystem, right? Not just the technology training, but life skills, coaching, support network um, to help them be successful. And so I have been actively engaged in this community <laughs> um, in a variety of spaces, working on STEM programs for um, developmentally challenged children, um, love the youth program from our, our uh, Get With It conference. And I think the more that we can engage young people, especially young people of color, young ladies, engage them, sustain them on that path, we will do amazing things tapping into that diversity. So this might be news to you. Yeah. GirlCon yes. is being hosted June 12th at the Fawcett Center. Oh, that's awesome. Through Get With It. <gasps> That's awesome. Yes. That's so awesome. we're starting to um, Great. get some marketing going, and we've had huge, huge response from school districts. So, Good. yeah. I think the earlier, the better. I think. Um, Do you like GirlCon? And Angie Lopez, Angela Lopez <laughs> named it GirlCon, and we all supported it. I think <laughs> I, I'm going to be direct. I don't care what we call it, right? And I don't mean that rudely. It's all about tapping into that energy young, while they're young, yes. showing them a path, showing them, right? The whole, if you can see it, you can be it. Yes. Let's show them what they can be. And I think, again, young ladies and people of color have a, such a great opportunity in this space to to be to, to make a difference. So the focus is going to be very hands-on. So we um, have collaborated with Chris Volpe okay. in Multivarious okay. and uh, Christopher Judd, and um, he's with um, Manifest Solutions, yep. and um, he's going to do a session on Raspberry Pis. Oh, good! And Chris is going to do a gaming you session. Okay. And very interactive. I would love for us to do some even 3D printing. Yep, that's going to be that. there. With some yep. young folks that they they really get to that. We're going to try to do some laser printing too, mm -hmm. but um, the machine there's like some complications on moving this machine or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with the Idea Foundry on how the girls can create something, and then mm -hmm. while they're at the conference. Mm -hmm. We'll be off printing these mm -hmm. and then bring them back for them. So um, excellent. Yes. Yeah, so the 3D printing we yeah. got, they're going to have them their robotics yep. and everything that robotics. We can have a do. robotics guy. Yeah. So yeah, it w hopefully 
Yep. It'll all be holoponics and holo, holo, holographic technology. Yes. And how that integrates, um, particularly, I don't know if you remember in our Cleveland conference, right? In the Cleveland Museum of Art. Yes. Using a lot of virtual reality and other technologies, but I think holographics will become a big part of helping aid people, for example, with disabilities to still experience, right? Uh, right. Museums or, or zoos or other things. So, so um, with the youth track, I asked if we could do a virtual reality mm -hmm. uh, station experience. Sure. And I found out this is the craziest thing. So my daughter goes to Southwest Licking. Okay. And she said to me yesterday, we're learning about, or I said, how is school? How is school going? Blah, blah, blah. And she's like, fine. She's like, oh, in social studies, we're learning about the Great Wall of China. I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, we have a VR machine. We have a VR thing, and we get uh -huh. to go up and experience yeah. it all. Almost like an aerial tour yes. of the, yeah. And I was like, that is the most yeah. genius. If anybody's watching this, yeah. <laughs> let's move to the, that's the most genius thing I've ever heard for teaching history. Sure. I've never thought of it that way. And, and go back to augmented reality, so using some of those same concepts, again, for people who have disabilities but may want to be able to experience, yeah. um, again, zoos, museums, or, or great historical sites like right. that that may not have the physical mobility to do that. Think about the world that opens up for them. That, I mean, yeah, yeah unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, there you go, school districts. <laughs> <laughs> Get on it. Get on it. Get on it. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, and I, again, back to tapping into the youth, because I think, um, you know, as you know, I do a lot of coaching and mentoring of yes. very successful, capable women within the technology world today. And there's some common themes that come up, and I think those common themes can be solved by introducing, like mm -hmm. some of the things that we've talked about, getting some of the more diverse youth uh, female, right? Right. Um, at, at a at a young age, and and um, letting them see themselves being successful in yeah. this in this space. I mean, that and helping them to really um, one use their voice, right? Use their voice, learn how to use it timely, appropriately. But I think a lot of particular young people, a lot of young people today, particularly young women, and and I don't know if you've ever gone to like an invention league. I, would, I, I think schools go back. If we're going to lecture schools today, yeah. schools ought to, just like they have basketball leagues and 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 the, oh, like they and have again, like, they should have invention leagues. So they have the um, the Lego robotic. Oh, that's amazing. Well, they yeah. call it a club, right? Well, but invention. So I'm going to uh, these amazing children are amazing. They they especially. Um, the youth of today, they're so aware of the world mm -hmm. around them. They're so aware, more so than I ever was just a few years ago. In my youth. <laughs> um, but Terry just so, learned how to use her I Apple phone. Just <laughs> saying, you know, as young as I am. Um, they're so aware and they're so mm -hmm. conscious. They're socially conscious of the world around them and they want to make a difference. You go to an invention league and to look at the inventions that these young people are creating to make the world a better place, to make an impact on, on um, water uh, conservation. They wanna make an impact on um, um, saving uh, children's lives. They might see a news story about a, Is this a carbon monoxide. No, it's not, but it should be. That's oh. why I said we're going to lecture the schools. Yeah. Right now, it's extracurricular based on an individual family or child's interest. It's it's separate, but I think we could really wow, that's, sponsor. Yeah. But they they are amazing. They hear a story about a child who drowns. They come up with the most creative and amazing ideas for life preserver systems. They hear news stories of a child that may have died because of carbon monoxide or left in a car. They have amazing ideas for sensors. They're very socially conscious and they want to make a difference. And I think again, some of these youth programs, we could tap we into could that tap. passion yeah. and really get them engaged. Wow, I never even thought about those. That that definitely. It's it's amazing. It really is. Yeah. So. And I, I, I guess some of it is a little bit of jealousy that I wish that I had had those opportunities. I think when I was young, I yeah. could have had such a leg up, right? The learning curve would have been a lot I, less. I mean, with the way technology is and electronics, kids definitely. Yeah. Yeah, like I watched my seven-year-old. We were doing math 
on the computer. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I know my login. And I'm like, wait, you're seven. How do you know? <laughs> Shoot. I got to uh -huh. write mine now. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. And he just typed it right yeah. in. and Their aptitude. Yeah. Unbelievably. Yeah. But, but that's a lesson for all of us right now, right? The pace of change within technology. Right. So go back to what we have to do to be successful in the field of technology, men or women. Um, adaptability to that pace of change. Adaptability to those new perspectives. Right. Um, we have to be continuous learners back to, you know, I do think maybe joining into the technology field after college, one of the things I think it did prompt me was for, I had to learn quickly, right? right. So people who had gone and loved it all their lives and, and been that techno geek and went and got a you know computer science degree or, or the like, I felt like I had some catching up to do. But I think that was a good thing in hindsight because it prompted me to really get into that continuous learning mode. I don't think I've ever lost that. I am always, and you know, you know me, we have conferences or whatever, and I don't sit in the <laughs> VIP room and no, choose. She's I go to every room. session possible. To, I want to learn. I, I literally, there's you'll, so much. You'll here. laugh at me then. Um, here at Xpeed, <laughs> uh -huh. we. Um, I made the joke to Rao, the yes. owner, yes. that um, I wanted to learn front end, front end like user experience, UI, okay. UI, UI, UX, yeah. yeah. And he he chuckled and he said, uh -oh, "Oh, you don't have time for that without all the stuff you do." And I was like, "No, no, no. yeah, I'm gonna, I yeah, I want to learn it." So um, last Friday, we had a meeting, and before the meeting. I was on LinkedIn learning HTML, and I walked into this meeting. I'm like, yeah. Rob, did you know that you have to do the tags before and after, <laughs> and you have to have a doco type he's document? Like, and he looked at me, and he's like, are you now serious? Now she thinks she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> and he started laughing. Yeah. He's like, boy, you really? Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, I want to understand yeah. more of, I'm not a technical person. I don't know how to code, but I want to understand what people are talking when they yeah. we talk in these meetings. See, and I, I, I hear what you just said. You say, I'm not a technical person. But, you know, this day and age, I'm not really sure what that means. What is a technical person? Certainly, traditionally, a technical person was that that network engineer yes. that, that also fixed your computer and took care of your phone, right? So there's a legacy definition of a technologist. But today, certainly, that UI, UX, right, the usability. Right, user-friendly. equally, <laughs> if not more important than almost anything else. And so um, I think, you know, there are there the the field the spectrum of technology is so broad yeah that playing in any of those spaces across that spectrum you are in technology you are you i sometimes i, I think you don't have a choice but That's to understand true. how they all work together you know you being an enterprise storage engineer versus a business intelligence analyst there's a point at where those intersect Right. right. Cybersecurity. There's a point that that intersects right. with all the other app dev and right. And so I do think it, having an awareness of all of the components of that spectrum is important. But knowing where your passion is. Right. Right. Am I passionate about that user experience and the usability? Am I passionate about the the discipline of the infrastructure and the network? You know, where's your passion? But to me, there's technologists all across that spectrum. And I would say for women like i was an yep. outsider to the it yep. world that i the first words out of my mouth was yep. well i don't know how to code right sure and then it was told to me well you don't know you don't need to know how to code you need to right. take your skills that you have and before you know it mm -hmm. right and continuous learning is amazing yes. the other part is right the internet love the internet it's a great google thing. is my friend i, I, I believe it's going to be around a while it's my <laughs> prediction <laughs> But and if it's on the internet, it's I'm always just true, saying, right? There are so many resources available. Go back to that continuous learning. Mm -hmm. There are people who, you know, again, I've coached some people, and they're like, ah, oh, you know, they want somebody with agile. I really don't know agile. Google it, right? right. And, and I don't mean to pick on Google as the, you know, the end all search engine, but 
but there's so many resources available. I even go go to um, any Col uh, Columbus library, right? If you have a Columbus mm -hmm. Metropolitan Library membership, which includes like all the all suburbs, of them. the resources that you have available through, I mean, lynda.com and other things, you know, there's a ton of resources for people who want to learn new oh, subjects. Oh, yeah. Right? If people say, I don't know what business intelligence is, right? There's Google so it. many free, <laughs> I want to go, free resources. Yes. For you to learn, explore, figure out if that's really where you have an interest. Then, yes, invest time and money into yeah. carrying that further. Well, but, that's what I did with LinkedIn. Yeah, I had no yeah. idea that they had like these like Tra beginner courses, sure. and I was like, "Oh well, sure, damn, look at that." I mean, Harvard, you know, and and um, yeah. MIT and others have well, amazing I think, online webinars yeah. around specific topics. You know, I think um, I'm trying to, is uh, M MIT just um, I did one or looked at one for um, business requirements, right? How to how to really build out. Um, good business use cases so that the development team and others and oh, so again it's the, the resources that are out there are available it's unlimited. Unlimited. you couldn't you couldn't get to all of it in your lifetime so yeah. so I go I get sometimes a little bit not frustrated but where people say oh I don't have time to go back and get a degree and okay well online 24 7 yeah resources are unbelievable you know here's my thing also what do you subscribe to what do you read are you reading and i again not to pick on but are you reading a people magazine or are you reading <laughs> wired are you reading right what are you reading right what are you watching i mean i'm not a tv watcher most people who know me know i don't do most of the shows they talk about i have no clue and i don't watch um so I think it's back to your focus and your balance. What what are you spending your time doing? Right. And the resources out there are unbelievable. What are you doing with your time to tap into those resources? But I also don't think you necessarily need a degree. I I couldn't agree more. <laughs> to to an extent. To an extent. Yeah. So, like I think for a basis, if you're passionate, like me, I went to college, mm -hmm. but here I'm in my yep. in my forties, and I up and changed my career. Right. I didn't have a degree in computer science. Right. But I, so I, I am a little bit, um, I'm a little wishy-washy on that. Not really. <laughs> so I agree that every single person in the technology field doesn't need a degree. I think the core importance is attitude and aptitude. However, so there are, there's a time and a place where the balance of the team, right, mm -hmm. comes into play. And sometimes the expertise, the depth of expertise that is gained maybe through electrical engineering, nuclear engineering, right? Some fields where that depth of expertise can't be gained without many, 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 many more years of experience. Correct. And so sometimes there is a, a value statement um, to having you know, that degree. I'm not against it. I'm not oppositional to it. I think it's about balance. I like diverse teams. Diverse backgrounds, diverse experiences, diverse opinions, diverse thinking, diverse perspectives, because you need all of those perspectives to uh, come up with a product or end product that actually serves all the people. You should come to an XP meeting because we <laughs> definitely have that here. Yeah. I, I, I believe it's that balance. You need all those facets of thinking and experiences to come up with an end result that serves all the people. Everyone. Yeah. So I want to go back to when you were that developer yes and that little little yeah. little little cubby little cubby yeah how many women were in your same situation very few okay if any i'm trying to remember <laughs> i put her on the spot very few if any wow yeah. and and then what i found very quickly is that when there was an awareness of the gender disparity companies would often bring in women and often they put them in project manager or business analyst roles. So so I felt like it was a, a bit of a superficial check the box. Yes, we have women, but very rarely were they putting women in those core technical roles. Now, at first I thought it was uh, for various reasons. I think in hindsight, it, it's actually a, a compliment and alignment, right? Women, general, and I, I'm going to generalize, although I don't, you know, I don't believe everybody's a cookie cutter. Right. But women tend to be able to organize <laughs> complex, challenging, and situationally diverse, you know, um, 
er, when things are dynamic and constantly changing, yes. women handle that. Women, women multitask better. Women organize better. Women generally communicate. Their communication skills are better. So those are the perfect skills and attributes for project, project manager, manager. <laughs> right? Um, and so it actually is a compliment, but I'm not sure it was that conscious at the time. Right. Um, and, and again, I think it, to some degree, created some devaluing, right, of, of women in the field. Um, but I think now there's great recognition that women have equal capability for math, science, analytics, right, and, and some of the, the core skills that maybe were traditionally attributed to, to men. Well, you know, Kevin, I do know Dr. Kevin, Kevin Croxel. I like to call brilliant. him. Brilliant. I like to call him an astronaut. He keeps telling me he's not an astronaut, he's but brilliant. Um, we had the discussion. He was on the podcast, and uh, we talked about women mm -hmm. data scientists. Yes. And he said, I think he, it was equal, wasn't it, Darren? In his class, there were excellent four, I think, in his class. Um, excellent. Kind, yeah. It was about fifty percent women, fifty percent dudes, and yeah, yeah. it was well. Which was encouraging. Good. And we also know that 53% of the workforce are women. They're women. Good. Now, the further we go up the scale of management, Correct. executive Where leadership, does it... and, and then eventually to the board, the percentage of women diminishes as quite, we go up that quite scale. Quickly. Quite quickly. Quite quickly. <laughs> so good, except then I would challenge, we're getting them in, no. we're interesting, right? they're interested except women then leave the field of technology, significantly higher rates than men leave the field. Women leave the field for very specific reasons, right? Men leave the field for retirement, for better opportunities, for, for startups. Promotions. For promotions. <laughs> women leave the field, right, for different reasons, right? Lack of inclusion, can't see a career path that looks like them, that feels like them. Lack of like promotion. Them. Right, and the fact that, exactly, that they could make the same amount of money working a lot less hours in a different field of interest. So that's very problematic to me, especially in cybersecurity. The number of women in cybersecurity is particularly low, and I would really like to see that change. We had Connie. I know. On the podcast. Or as I like to refer to her, the godmother of cybersecurity. She is. <laughs> she, she knows everybody. She does. <laughs> and we had the same. But after her, so she spoke at the Columbus, and she was telling me, Yes. She's like, oh, I was nervous. Yeah, I did. she was. You know, nobody, cybersecurity, kind of everybody goes, Ugh, right? <laughs> and I was so fascinated because yeah. she was talking to, actually, Larry and I on the podcast. But she told me that um, she had standing room. Yes. I loved her session. Did you see her session? I did you not because, was? no, yeah. because unfortunately, mm -hmm. this year, things are a little different. Yeah. And I get to enjoy the conference, um, yeah. but the past few you years, were working. I was doing running around and handling yeah. things behind the scenes. I loved her session. What her <laughs> session really did was map the attributes that are relevant for cybersecurity. For the, for the again, there's a spectrum within cybersecurity, right. right? From the more intuitive to the more analytical. And what she did, I thought, was a really good job of talking. If you're somewhere in the field of technology or around it, here are the attributes that you have or the skill sets that you have that would be a good fit and where in cybersecurity and how to transition into that. What skills to develop, what groups you should join, what you should read, what information you should get to really be able to be successful in cybersecurity. Yeah, I she, loved her session. She told me that she had about 20 people reach out to her yep. on getting Excellent. into it. And I was good. like, that's fantastic. That is good. So is she, good. and then she went up to Cleveland <laughs> yeah. and did it again. And, and I think that <laughs> we are doing doing a lot. I go back to mentioning um, I see stars or, or some of our youth programs that mm -hmm. you've talked about. Um, there's a Perba, Majunder Perba, Majunder and Cyber Vision, her own company, but runs um, Cool Tech Girls um, in Dublin. Correct. Right? Which again, to sustain interest of young ladies. Here's the challenge. We, we are working very hard to get women and people of color into tech. Now we have to work equally as hard to retain, promote, and Correct. advance them. Yes. That to me is the next That's challenge. That's the challenge, yes. And I look at startups. You know, all, uh, my numbers might be a little dated, but in general, 5% of tech startups are led by women. 
Um, I, there's a lot of reasons that go into that, but I think it's kind of back to uh, years of pay disparity. Yes. Women tend to, again, I'm generalizing, but women tend to have higher child care responsibilities, higher elder care responsibilities, tend to take more responsibility within their community and their churches. So when they get to that point, they don't have the risk tolerance that men do, right? First of all, to take to a startup higher risk. It is interesting, though, because tech startups run by women tend to be far more successful and profitable than those run by men. And so how do we bridge that, you know, that disparity? We um, talked about Alicia Odie. I think I got her name right, Darren. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> um, with Rev1. And yeah. she was telling us about um, all of the women startups. Yes. And very yeah. successful and again I think it's um, but not very many not enough right you know? and and I, I want to be careful you know you Doug McCullough who is just a oh, really amazing person Doug. he's so good at coaching me on <laughs> recognizing successes and you know for me I tend to I, I want it all right I want you know totally quality right now right okay so um, we are making progress in a lot of spaces, and I want to feel successful and recognize those. At the same time, what I don't want to do is have people then rest, take their foot off the accelerator, and say we're there. Right. Because we're not. We're not. So That's so funny that you said that. Yeah. Somebody asked me, um, do you have a met? mentor they were asking me mm -hmm. and I was like well yeah I got a lot of them mm -hmm. people I always ask advice for and they're mm -hmm. like well do they have mentors I was like everybody has somebody that mm -hmm. they call and get yes. advice from yes they do or mentor or, well they should or they should some people and especially women yes quite often don't have that mentor um, sometimes they think it's a sign of weakness that they have to ask for help right they see it as a as a risk to them of maybe sharing what they don't know with somebody. Right. And it, so quite often people don't, but every person, I don't care where you are on that rung, should have you, one. You should have one. You should have, I I don't think just one. I'm a person, I, I call it, you know, the, my board. This is yeah. my <laughs> advisory board. Um, but I, it's so important. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, with Get With It, Angie, Dan, and Katie and I were always like reaching out to each other, yes. like, what do you think about this? Yeah. How do I handle it? So, yeah. I have been extremely fortunate in my career and in my life to have people around me who are so generous, generous with their time, generous with their support, generous with sharing with me. I, I, um, I try to analyze that and say, how did I get so lucky? Right? <laughs> no, don't analyze it. Um, but I but I think in analyzing it, I think part of it is I've always been willing to ask for that. Well, that's good. That to me is the key that I've said, hey, will you give me your perspective on this? I feel like I'm, you know, I, I call it, um, I think in like a pretzel, right? Where I thought myself into a pretzel where I'm just like, okay. And so I've never been shy to ask. And I think that is the, that's the key, is women being willing to ask, hey, can I pick your brain on this? And then when somebody thinks you're open to hearing new mess, they're willing to share. People right. are absolutely willing to help. All you have to do is ask for it. That's right. So That's right. So important. So when you, let's go back to the community. Yes. Because we love the community. Yes, we do. We do. All right. Could you name all the... <laughs> could I name all the communities support you give where oh, all your God, no. I know right <laughs> so I mean you know I think there's, I see stars well I'm on so I'm on the board of a few organizations okay. I'm on the board of I see stars uh, I'm on the board executive advisor board for get with it um, I'm on the board of a wonderful organization called the Childhood League Center um, focuses on uh, the ecosystem of developmentally challenged children right mentally okay. physically an otherwise amazing organization that has amazing results to help those children and their families and their ecosystem to not just survive but thrive in this community. Um, you, know, you know me, I'm always guest speaking or engaging panels, you know, women in analytics. Yeah. And Darren, just so you know, we put Terry on the spot. Like, if we think 
the keynote's not yeah. going to show up. Somebody's not going to show up. You'll be there, right? <laughs> so you're ready, right? <laughs> So I'm always open and I also coach and mentor a number of people, the maximum that I can. Um, I try to be, you know, engaged with, and this is going to be that, you know, like concentric circles. So there's certainly the organizations that I am on, right? My right. name is, but I also try to then take that circle and expand it. So the people that I sit on the board with, when you get to know them and you understand their organizations and you understand what their organ, then you can make connections of, hey, you know, because I try to put people together. I find mm -hmm. much more personal reward in helping other people to find their success than I do anything for myself. I, I, I really do. It's kind of weird, but that's okay. Well, no, you're a selfless person. Yes, but there's times and places where that's not always the expectation or the rewarded behavior. There are certain cultures, corporate cultures, that are a little more cutthroat, and you need to be that shark in the tank, right? That's, that's the success criteria. And it took me a little while to realize, okay, can I do that? Sure, I can do that. Do I love that? Is that who I am? Is that how I, no, that's not, <laughs> not what I thought. you at all. <laughs> no. And so um, for me, then making those connections of connecting up, for example, you know, a, a school that wants to really build a STEM program and introducing them to somebody at Battelle or otherwise that can help them to do that. That is like, that's awesome. That yeah. is great. So, and then we have our, you know, our CIO forum that mm -hmm. um, does a lot in this community with um, our CIO Tomorrow conference, but then that's, also with growing leadership. So we have April a, 30th this year. Yes, it is. Okay. We just um, want to give a shout out to that. Yes. CIO um, Tomorrow, the four, right? CIO Tomorrow. CIO Tomorrow. Is yeah. on April 30th. Yes. And then um, the... Gosh, women in analytics, you know, always has stuff going on. I think February, the February um, lunch and learn, I will be speaking about teamwork. And, and their conference is in May. May. Don't ask me the date. Uh, yeah. John. That's excellent. Yes. John is a, on, he's yes. a volunteer for them. Yes. Um, we have our InfoSec, you know, oh, one of the yes. biggest InfoSec summits in the country is yes. here. Um, Connie is a big part of that. She's she on the board is. for ISSA, but then Tracy Jones, I think, is doing a lot with that this year as well. And so a lot of good women drivers of key technical, you know, opportunities. Um, we should all be taking advantage. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. I'm sure I'm missing some, and I'm going to oh. feel terrible. <laughs> when she, she, she's going to wake up tonight and be like, oh, oh why didn't I mention that, you know. Damn it! But that's where I say again, there's always something. There's no, right. um, you know, there's some folks that, I, again, I have coached where they're like, how do I get to know people? Go, go to these events, listen, learn, meet people, talk to people, you know, follow up on things that interested you, figure out what interested you. You know, even, you know, Chase um, has women in tech. Oh, yeah, they do. You know, sessions, mm -hmm. the, the women's, fund weld i mean there's tons of organizations oh, weld's a great one that again are trying to empower right enable empower and educate women to thrive and so engage i just say engage i meet up if you're yes. not yes. on meetup yes this that is like perfect i get an email Absolutely. i probably get 10 a day that tell me everything that's going on yes. and it's not necessarily yes. just like it related because no. i I mean, bowl to bowl. exactly. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know how I got that one. I, listen, but bowling's fun. Glo <laughs> global, global, glow bowling. Glo Have you ever glow bowled before? Hey, you I'm need gonna to do stop. it. You just need to stop <laughs> saying that. But I, I like beer, and so I was like, I yeah, like I. Okay. So I get bowling. It's a perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So like I will get yeah. like a meetup that pops up that's yeah. like, hey, yeah. we're going to this brewery. Right. And you just meet new people. And before yeah. you know it, they're tied to and somebody you know. So I'm going to go back to kind of where the women and people of color who have not come through the traditional ranks. 
that can be a terrifying Oh yeah, it's event. very intimidating. That is why I always tell, I will help you. Mm -hmm. There isn't a person I have, and I, you know, when I've managed in large organizations, I have never had such an ego that I haven't been able to give any person five minutes. I've said that. I can give anybody five minutes, anytime. So ask, say, okay, I want to go to this. Actually, you know, it's great. Somebody reached out to me. Um, we have these tech strategy events, right? Uh, ben Blancara and the oh, yeah, collaboratory yeah, yeah. Yeah. in tech life. So uh -huh. um, we have a tech strategy event and they reached out and said, hey, I don't, you know, I'm not sure if I should go. I don't really know anybody. I'm taking, you're going, you're going. You will know me, right? Right. You will know me and that will, that will start the conversation. Um, because for some people that is very intimidating. It's very intimidating. It is. And very so we have to help them. I yes. don't I don't judge that. No. You know, I'm generally a pretty extroverted person and can talk to almost anybody. Um, but I do not assume anybody can do that. And so I always try it's to make It's tough. Sure. Yeah, it is. It's tough. It is. And um so that's always been my advice yeah. when um people are like, How you're so busy, but you yeah. seem to make it to all these things and I'm like well, yeah, I mean, I'm here to support other women to get them to come here. Yep. So, um, yep. yeah, huge. Plan it. Plan your day. Plan, plan your week. It plan out. it And work the plan. Yeah. Right? If, if, and some people, again, I, I want to be careful. You have kids. You have other obligations. It is a balance. It's a constant balance. It is. I do think, though, most employers, most are far more supportive of your engagement in these things than you realize. Some people Correct. I begin coach them, they're intimidated. Oh, I don't want to ask my boss. I think he'll, you know, he won't like it. What? Ask. That's, what's right? the worst that they could say? Ask. No, not, and, no. And I think that honestly, but ask with a pitch that your engagement in this will create these value right. statements. And, and I think again, that's another big coaching point. Whether you're at work or whether you're doing professional development or what's the value statement that you expect to get out of this? That's why I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV. I have to be honest, there's no value statement. For me, I do things that I think are going to add value to my life. They're going to help me to be more whatever it is, you know, more successful, more productive, more knowledgeable, more. I, um, no worries. I will be watching the basketball game tonight. <laughs> The when Michigan it, State do, basketball I, game at mm, seven. Mm, 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 so, so, go, go um, so, you know, I, I'm not, I watch sporting events, you know, I watch the news. It's not, but I just think it's, it is about balance that, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to enhance your, not only capabilities and knowledge, but it it's rewarding. It's exciting to... Go back to you, you know, watched a LinkedIn webinar and said, okay, I know what he's talking about now. I understand it. I can have a conversation. It's an eight, doesn't that eight feel, series. Doesn't that feel better? Oh, yeah. Because I'm a, I just finished series yeah. three and I passed the quizzes. Sure. So that makes me feel good. Like, damn, look at me go. I right. can pass these quizzes on code. Like I know what I'm talking about. Like I know what I'm talking and about. And doesn't that feel good? Forget the value oh, statement to no, your profession. Yeah. Forget the value. It makes you feel good. Yeah. yeah. And then I walked in here yeah. today. You're going to laugh at this. I walked in here today and I said, I'm going to build an app. And this is the app I'm going to build. And See? the developers are like, do you know how complex that is? And I was like, well, you all are going to help me. We're going <laughs> to find out together. Yeah. This is going to be a collaborative effort. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That And I, I love that um, your initiative to say, I, I'm going to try. You yes. Know, I do, um, totally unrelated, <laughs> but I do a ton of my own home renovations. It's been my, I used to say it's cheaper than therapy. You know, I just say it's therapy oh, because it's belt? not cheaper. I have plenty of power tools. And do you? And I know you? how to use them. Wow. But my thing is, a lot of people were, are, are, yeah, how did you learn to do that? Bob Fila. <laughs> no. <laughs> but my thing, I, I tried it. I said, what is the worst that's going to happen? Is then I have to call somebody and pay them to do it? Why wouldn't I try to do it myself in the first place? Right. right? And so it's simply by by making, and again, go back, uh, Google, how did you learn to do what, you know, hardwood flooring, install a cabinet, install it, whatever you're doing. Like, Google it. It's, there are so many useful videos out there, you know, that tell you everything you need to know. See, we're probably sisters from another mother, but listen <laughs> to this. 
I replaced a toilet. There you go. It's actually not that hard. It's it? not hard at all. I mean, it does suck at certain parts, but it it's does. not that hard. It does. It, you're right. The only yeah. time it did suck is when I turned the water back on yeah. and I had not screwed it, one of the bolts on uh -huh. tight enough okay, and whoops. water went flying everywhere. That was the worst that happened. Turn it off. So I turned it. off the water and I had, and I got, yeah. and I kept. But yet in the work, in the technology environment, Women in particular, but people don't have that no. initiative to say, "With all, screw it, I'm going to try it." Yes. What's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that Water can happen? Water spray, and I'll turn it off. Exactly. We don't do that in the workplace. Fail, fail fast. Fail fast. Yeah. We don't do that in the workplace for so many other reasons, right? And, right. And I, and we've got to figure out how to encourage people to take more chances encourage workplaces to encourage people, people taking more right. chances and reward that. Um, one of the things I've always talked about, particularly with some of my colleagues, is um, you know reward structures, both conscious and subconscious. When, for many years, I would say in the 2000s and, and beyond, the, the reward structure was around, I'll call it the firefighters, right? Right. Things broke. Somebody responded and fixed it, and they are the hero, and mm -hmm. we recognize them, and we give them gift cards, and we implemented culturally a reward system that was backwards, right? We shouldn't be rewarding. I should I want to be careful. We want to reward the people who fixed the problems. We should be more rewarding the people who right. built systems that were so <laughs> durable they didn't break in the first place. Exactly. But yet those seem to sometimes just be the as expected. And Correct. So we have to make sure in the workplace that back to, yeah, go ahead, try to install just a toilet. Try it. Sure, just try it. Let's see what happens. It, it Back to, you know, it can be easy to stop learning if you don't have an environment, right, that supports that. It can be easy to defer and let somebody else do it, right? Call oh, it's easier it's that so way. It's so easy. Yeah. But yet it's not. It's not. Yeah. So um, my my husband was mm -hmm. like, I don't think you can do this. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, I'll show you. Uh -huh. See, that's my problem <laughs> is I have a, I'll show you. Okay. And then I read on LinkedIn. Uh -huh. Where they say, um, I don't fail, I either learn or I win. Sure. Those are the two, there's no failure. Sure. It's either I learn or I sure. win. And so. Right, it's the whole Edison. I didn't fail. I, I didn't learned, fail. I learned, I learned how learned. not to create a light bulb exactly. a thousand times over. Right. And and he wasn't kidding. I know people make jokes out of that. He wasn't kidding. He's like, that's the process. That's the process. We have some lost that somewhat. Yes. Um, now, I do feel like culturally it's coming back a little bit, right? That we do have some embraced cultures of, you know, let's try it. Let's, let's try, try it. Yes. In a controlled risk environment. Let's just yeah. try it. So, What's the worst that happens? Yeah. Can't blow anything up. Well. <laughs> I do have a t-shirt that I love that I did get from the, the NASA um, gift shop, and it says... Are you an astronaut, it says, too? It says, well, actually, it is rocket science. <laughs> so, I do like that t-shirt. You and Kevin, you're both, uh, you're both astronauts. We should... Can you imagine us in space together? No, but that's hilarious. He would be the best dressed astronaut in space. He would be. So. He would be. Yeah. Um, side note, did you see his shoes today? I did, of course. Holy moly. Of course. He had <sighs> Sometimes it's hard to not look at the tie to look at the shoes. I know. But, you know yeah, absolutely. Wow, he was dressed to the nines today. My, I prefer the blue velvet suit. Oh, he does. Yes, yeah, he one does. Of my favorite. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think I, you know, again, having that individuality is also uh, tremendously important. Yes. Being okay with it even more important. Exactly. So there's a lot of people who, who are individuals, they're different, they look at things differently, but then they don't, they're not always really okay with it. They always feel they're the outsider or they're oh, not. Kevin owns it and, and I love owns it. it. And I love that too. And I, love I, it. I think back to women, people of color, right? Some of your non-traditional, um, you know, we don't want cookie cutters in tech. Correct. We need to get out of those cookie cutters. We need creativity. We need that, those different personalities to drive solutions that fit different personalities. The world is full of different personalities. Which and reminds our technology me. solutions should, you know, match that. Darren, did you buy your flip fish flops? No? Oh. 
Yeah. We know Kevin's fish I know. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Darren was looking them up when we were podcasting, you know, Kevin. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't see you as a fish flop. Maybe pork chops or something. Something different, but yeah. Bacon. Bacon, bacon flops. flops. It is the year oh. of the pig. Right? It is. It is. We had a discussion so, about that. Oh bacon my gosh. flops. We can make bacon flaps. Yeah. But it's all in how you look at it. I, right. I have a lovely meme on my wall, and it's a little pig, and it says, I turn vegetables into bacon. What's your superpower? <laughs> right? It's all in your perspective. That's right. So. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> everybody good loves one. bacon. I don't care who you are. Everybody loves bacon. What's this? Bacon makes everything better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, wow. All right. Well, what other exciting news do I have to tell you? Well, let's talk about Get With It. Okay, great. Let's. Let's talk about <laughs> so we, how we are expanding. We are. So um, we have a new Columbus chapter, mm-hmm. and we have our president, Michelle Harris, and our vice president, Amanda Ling, and we have an Andrea and Amanda, and I just met them, so... Uh, Ugh, apologies, I don't know which one is the secretary and which one is the treasurer. Okay. But we're building up that community. Yep. They're so excited, yep. which is great. Because With the expansion of a team in Cleveland, right? Oh, yep. Now we have, yes. empowering our Columbus team. And we then we have, have our good friend Jen Flates out in yep. Pittsburgh. Yep. We had a great conversation with somebody who I believe yep. wants to head that one up. Yep. So, yes, we're booming. Yes. And we're going to do Girl Con here in yep. Columbus. Which, you know, is, uh, at the heart of my heart, I am so passionate about that. I, I think, again, <laughs> we, you know, it, it, there are so many studies, and I'm all, you know, studies, so many studies that show, you know, the more diverse your team, the more profitable your company. Studies that show uh, the more women, right, the younger we can engage them, right, the more successful they are. There's so many studies that affirm all of, now it's the question of, making it happen how do we know so i feel like get with it is on that side of the coin of make it happen right we educate we empower and we connect women to thrive in the field of technology and now starting that even younger again only creates that synergy even sooner so uh, we're shooting for seventh eighth ninth and tenth graders so i i did not know this was a thing i just learned this that in the school systems, mm-hmm. they now, when you go into high school, you can choose a path of like STEM mm-hmm. pathway in, in some or school in some school districts. Wow. I don't, I, um, and the only reason is, um, in Reynoldsburg, I'm going to use Reynoldsburg as an example. Okay. Um, our good friends at CareWorks Tech yep. invited me, Caitlin invited me to come out. Uh, they had 10 girls that okay. were freshmen, okay. and they brought them to CareWorks Tech for um, a lunch and learn kind of thing. Okay. And Caitlin called me the night before, and she's like, hey, are you busy tomorrow? Can you swing by? And I was like, oh, sure. I mean, good job, kids, <laughs> like. But other than that, I'm not I'm busy. good. So I did. And um, um, Kim and, and Caitlin put on this um, whole – it was just – it was wonderful. Like, it was – it just made me smile because there was – there was 10 girls, mm-hmm. and um, they were all from a STEM class in Reynoldsburg, okay. and they were very diverse, Excellent. very diverse. And it was so funny is because they got up, everybody got up and talked about what they do in the tech. We had a, the chief marketing officer for York was there. Nice. Okay. And... Um, one of the ladies who does risk data analysis from York because they're tied together was okay. there. And uh, so I get up there and I'm like, well, I'm with Get With It and we're having a youth conference if y'all want to come. <laughs> I like didn't really, I wasn't prepared. Uh-huh. Like I wasn't gonna. So um, they were all excited. Good. And then they, Good. we hadn't established an age. And I was like, I don't know, fifth through eighth grade. And all of them went flat. And I was like, well, what grade is this? And they were, because I had no idea. They were like, we're in the ninth grade. We want to come. We'll be going into Mm. 10th grade. That made me start thinking, Mm. this is a very influential age, that seventh, eighth, ninth, and 10th graders, where they don't know everything yet, but they want to figure out what path. It's also the age where the social pressures become unbelievable. And so giving them again 
um, a view and a vision and aspirations towards tech yes and and giving them a network to support that social pressure so important so the Reynoldsburg school district has a whole stem community excellent in the school yeah. district yeah. and the teacher was totally uh, bye Kevin come and say hi we want to see your shoes actually see I told you this was live there's no editing Tell me no animals were harmed in the making of those boots. Put them right up on the table so that you can see those bad boys. Nice. Oh, with those blue socks. Oh. What kind of socks do we have? All right. Love it. So we uh we love we love your choices and we love that you own them. Yeah, it's even you. more important. Thank we talked about yeah. I told you he was a snazzy today. He was all snazzed out. Yeah, all right. He well, thank you. Three meetings out of this outfit today. <laughs> Oh, four. four and a and a podcast. And a podcast. Look at that. <laughs> Such a successful day for you. <laughs> Bye, Kevin. Bye. Have fun. Be good. Everyone else back here is gone. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so um, the Reynoldsburg School District yep. has this whole program of STEM. They have a STEM Academy, I think. Excellent. And people can go to it. Yeah, it's excellent. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Which, you know, is a good thing for a lot of reasons. It's also a necessity. Mm -hmm. It's crucial, right? The gap in the workforce that we have now is certainly significant and is only projected to become even greater, right? As many right. jobs become much more software-based, right? We're asking manual laborers, whether it's manufacturing or truck drivers or others, to actually almost become software administrators and mm -hmm. engineers. Yeah. Um, filling that gap is a necessity for this country, not just as a as a driver of equality and opportunity, you know, certainly the pay scale in technology is, um, you know, certainly good for our communities. Yes. Um, but but it's a necessity, right, to run some of the, the the future systems that are critical to our infrastructure. And we have talked, like Angie and I have had discussions about, you know, nurses. Yep. Well, what do you when you go to the doctor? What do you? What do you, they're on the computer? Mm -hmm. They're on their iPad. They're. Mm -hmm. It's all technology mm -hmm. focused. No, because you're on a database mm -hmm. and you can go to my chart and, sure. you know, and yeah. so to say that and, it's and going to go away. Yeah, even go nurses, not just using computers, but ha I mean, even the, have you seen like phlebotomists, right? With the, oh yeah, uh, even some of their jobs have been, have been enhanced, not replaced, but enhanced, enhanced. Um, with technology that they need to know how to use when you start talking about, um, exoskeletons, right? For people who maybe have had limb damage or spinal cord damage and um, where physical therapists used to have a particular role, it's going to expand, right? To become, Correct. how do we use those how technologies we, yeah. to advance the concept of restoring the yeah. body, right? It, yeah, it's... Technology's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> like, like I said, the internet is sticking around and <laughs> I think, but so go back to every school, every school, and I want to say particularly in our more underserved areas, ha ought to have a STEM path for those students. Yes. Because I think that is the future, right? That is where the, the job skills will be needed, and that is where the job skills will be rewarded. Um, you know, I, I see STARS, again, very compelling to take people maybe who weren't on that path, who weren't on a traditional higher education path, you know, they come into our program making on average $9 an hour. They leave our program at $22 an hour and within 18 months or $36 an hour. And that's then with benefits and tuition and other opportunities that they didn't have at $9 an hour part time. Right. That helps everyone. You that helps their family. So many that, helps, that helps these young people be able to provide health care to their small children that they could never provide previously. Those are extremely impactful. So the more people that we can bring into that technology realm, again, the, you know, rising tides lift all boats. And so I think it's important. You're the second person to say that to me today. It must be the theme of the day. Oh my God. How many other told you it was year of the pig? Oh, I had that conversation um, last week because of bacon. Because of it, well, maybe. <laughs> I can't remember how why that came up, but the rising tide, right. yeah. This, yes. You're the second person to say that to me today. But the concept is sound that, you It's because we're having a Twitter war here at Xspeed. Oh. 
We're having a Twitter war. Okay. And whoever can get to a thousand Twitter followers first wins, and the other the other okay. ones have to buy buy lunch. Okay. And um, I'm losing. It's oh. really sad. I know, right? It's really sad. I know, right? Well, what kind of effort have you put into it? I've been putting in a lot of effort. Have you asked for help? Because I don't remember being asked to follow you. Oh, well. Just saying. Terry, do you want to follow me? Well, now that you've asked. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've been put, throwing it out there on LinkedIn really? a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are we? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're LinkedIn. For that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think, yeah. But. You're right. Like I, you gotta ask. I had to ask people, mm-hmm. how do you get people to follow you? And yeah, I am sadly, I am a Twitter voyeur. I do not tweet. I have never tweeted. I, but I am a voyeur. I mean, I want to be aware and you know understand. Oh, so you. But like, I, but this is back to prioritizing. I am not on. I'm not an active participant on every social media platform, because. Think about the time that that would consume. It takes a lot of time. And what does that take away from? For me, it would take away from something in my mind, to me, is more value added. So I just, I'm a voyeur and I so, like the funny ones, but outside of that, <laughs> I just don't do it. So I'm the same way where I'm always like, this takes too much time. I, my time is so valuable. Mm-hmm. So I found this app. I'm going to go ahead and promote it okay it's called buffer okay and i set out my linkedin and my my tweets for one whole week and it automatically just does it for me Mm -hmm. so it takes me maybe half an hour on a sunday evening Mm -hmm. and i sit down and i plan out my week of tweets and but then when something really funny comes up i do i do respond i do (laughs) post it but i might go off of the plan but yes i have planned it out for the week i i just it's too easy to let that consume you. Yes, and, and that's again, why I was like that. I can spend this much time right, doing which that. Which distract if the more time there is less time somewhere else. And, right. You know. You gotta. Yes. You gotta prioritize. So, yes, we're at a volleyball tournament that are twelve hours long, and you just sit there. Have nothing else to do but <laughs> to the whole world. They're long and painful. So, so all right, Darren, how are we doing on time? We're one hour. we're at one hour. Wow. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, we did good, huh? Okay, so this was our first live recording. Our live happy hour recording? It was. It was that's the only way I do these things okay. now is happy hour. Um, if I was any kind of host, there would be like caviar or something on the table. But the, I'm Slacker. Not, I am. So um, <laughs> we need a Dan Greenleaf. He's like the money guy with the food and everything. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you for watching and or listening. Right, Darren? And um, check us out at getwitted.org. Um, if you're interested in the youth conference, or you dropped your okay. glasses. Um, if you're interested in the youth conference, please um, contact us. You can go to getwitted.org and go to the contact uh, us, and we will send out an email. Or you can just email me at elizabeth.tolia at getwitted.org, either one, and I will make sure you get connected to the proper individual who's heading all that stuff up. Well, I'm helping, but we're... Yep. So, um, conference, the big Get Witted conference, the theme this year is Blue, Blueprint for Leadership, and that's going to be September 30th, and Cleveland it has not been decided quite yet. We're, we're shooting for October-ish, November, so um, that hasn't been decided yet. No yeah. lack of opportunity to engage Correct. with your peers. It's a fantastic time. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. We have a good time. So, All right. I want to thank you for joining me. Absolutely. And uh, you can come hang with me anytime. Anytime.